Blessings. I am Tabika K. Sam, founder and CEO of the Ladies of Hope Ministries. We have an epic vision to end poverty and incarceration of women and girls globally. Thank you for joining us today for the graduation of the inaugural Epic Ambassadors Fellowship. This innovative program trains women who are impacted by the criminal legal system to be legislative advocates, grassroots organizers, and lobbyists, and directly address policies and practices that harm women and girls who are impacted by these multiple systems. This phenomenal group of women will focus on legislative work that improves reentry service, ends cash bail, and supports children who are impacted by the system. They will also advocate for family reunification policies, parole and probation reform, housing equity, and reproductive justice in Wisconsin, Tennessee, New York, Florida, Louisiana, Texas, Maryland, and Trinidad and Tobago. We thank you for dedicating six months of your life to learning and preparing to be the voice as you go out to advocate and pass legislation that will impact and transform the lives of women and families impacted by the criminal legal system. You embody the power and politics that will change hearts and minds. I'd also like to thank Arnold Ventures and specifically thank Carlton Miller, who has been an incredible program officer, partner, and brother, not only to the women in the program, but to this organization, the Ladies of Hope Ministries. And thank you for your continued support of the Epic Ambassadors Program. We could not do this without you. We'd also like to thank the NFL Foundation for your contribution in helping to transform the lives of women and girls. And again, not only this program, but other programs at the Ladies of Hope Ministries. We thank you so much. Again, God bless you, all of you. I am so proud of you. Greetings. This is Congresswoman Chantel Brown from Ohio's 11th Congressional District congratulating you on this momentous achievement. You are the first class of what we hope to be many to complete the Epic Ambassadors Fellowship Program to become allies for women and girls impacted ne negatively by the criminal legal system. As a member of Congress and a longtime public servant, I know the toil required to see change happen at both the local and federal levels. I have sat at many tables, often as the only Black woman, and spoke out against injustices and disparities that have afflicted marginalized groups. Your commitment to progress is appreciated and admirable. You answered the call made by many of communities to fight for justice and equity, and I am honored to be part of your story of becoming change agents. While this is the completion of the program's first phase, it is also serving as the beginning of the next leg in your journey. As ambassadors, you will become a significant part of the reentry and family reunification process for many women and girls, hopefully ending the seemingly ceaseless cycle of incarceration for individuals. I wish you the best in your next phase and encourage you to reach out to me and other policymakers along your way to invoke change as we continue to fight for the good for all Americans moving forward. Congratulations again and stay the course. Hello, my name is Emma Cornelius from Brooklyn, New York and I'm an advocate, web developer, and strategist. And my visionary perspective has allowed me to work on several platforms geared towards criminal justice and reform. One being the Epic Ambassador Fellowship with the Ladies of Hope Ministries. Coming into the fellowship, my goal was to help improve reentry services for women, assisting them with healing traumas, family reunification, and self-efficacy. Throughout this fellowship, I've learned how to become a better public speaker, organizer, networker, and how to implement my ideas into legislative laws, which has been really rewarding. Uh, with all that I've learned, I plan on expanding on my goals of finding adequate solutions for the justice impacted, building community, and engaging in legislative initiatives to effectuate change and create a more equitable system. Um, I'm grateful to have interacted with a community of women and leaders who have inspired me. 
and share their knowledge with me. And we're all part of that process of ending this perpetuating cycle of broken families and communities caused by mass incarceration. Uh, and I'm so excited to be able to put my new skills to use. I want to say thank you to Topeka Sam, uh, all of the ladies and women and individuals at the Ladies of Hope Ministries, and all of the women and individuals I've interacted with along this journey. I have so much that I'm ready to give and do within New York City, and we're all leaders, and this was truly an empowering experience. Thank you. Hello, I am Navale Houghton, and I work with Maryland Volunteer Lawyer Services. My advocacy effort is dealing with juvenile justice reform within the state of Maryland. I have learned that advocating for youths who have a disproportionate contact with the criminal and justice system is not an easy conversation to have, but one that's desperately needed. I have gained more thorough insight into public speaking through the various involvement and interaction while advocating as a representative for the Ambassador Fellowship. My foundational base has greatly improved and the main lesson that I have learned is to seize every opportunity and turn it into a moment of sharing my advocacy knowledge through honest and open discussions. I plan to work closely alongside policymakers in order to identify factors that contribute to juvenile incarceration. In turn, I plan on finding ways to create preventative treatment programs for the youths who are subject to the criminal and juvenile justice systems. Hi, I'm Nicole Hutchison Moore in Dallas, Texas. Um, I'm with the Rusty Diamond Network here, and I'm so excited to be a part of this graduation today. Uh, the last six, seven months being in this epic ambassadorship, um, this cohort in regards to legislation has just been an amazing experience for me. Um, I'm just as impacted, was incarcerated in 2018, 2019. And um, in that time, really learned a lot about where the system was challenged and what happens when we are incarcerated. And as I went through my own process, I started actually an organization that helps women while they're incarcerated and when they return. And as I started getting into the details of helping everybody, I realized that a lot of the, the laws and the legislation that we have here in our state really impact uh, these women as they impacted me. So when I saw that Topeka and Ladies of Hope Ministry were doing this amazing six month uh, training program and legislation, I jumped right on board and was so excited to be a part of it. Um, you know, and now I'm going to take the opportunity to be able to work on women's legislation for programming and reentry and parole, all the things that have impacted uh, me and my life. And through this, this training and the wonderful people that have uh, conducted the training and given and shared their experience and expertise, I now feel like I have the confidence and also the knowledge to understand um, how some of the political realm and, and the legislation works and even writing a bill. So I'm just so grateful to be able to be in this opportunity. And uh, I really look forward to what lies ahead. I've already got my eyes on three or four bills, already working with some of the House representatives in our criminal justice department. And I know all that wouldn't have been possible if I hadn't been able to give this, this boost of confidence and understanding and uh, experience that I've had in able to do uh, the Ladies of Hope Ministry Epic Ambassadorship. I'm so grateful to all of you and to my fellow cohorts as well. So excited to see what we all do. Thank you so much. My name is Mantra Kamuja. I'm the director of the Safety and Freedom Fund, a program at Operation Restoration. In my advocacy efforts, I've been able to help over 400 people get cash bail in the city of New Orleans. But posting bail is only a means to an end. The missing piece with me was understanding policy and how we can push legislation. Being an EPIC ambassador has helped me get to that goal. Now, with the tools that I've learned from this fellowship, I am taking it the next step. I'm writing public policy in the state of New Orleans. I'm sorry, in the state of Louisiana and hopes to end the cash bail in the city of New Orleans. My name 
is Sherry Branham. I am a social worker, phone counselor for NSPL, vice president for Mandolin Foundation, which is the only facility in our area and the surrounding areas for women and children affected by substance abuse and or mental health. I work with ex-incarcerated people organizing in the free campaign on advocacy for criminal justice reform. I was interested in working with Loam due to the criminal justice reform desperately needed in Wisconsin. Some concerns of mine are Wisconsin is still shackling pregnant women. There's severe lack of treatment for pregnant women, and we are utilizing crimeless revocation where an individual can be incarcerated without committing a crime. I became aware of this in 2014 when I was incarcerated while pregnant for a crimeless revocation which my violation was getting prescribed a medication. I had struggled with addiction and found out I was pregnant, so I went to my doctor, followed their advice on using medical-assisted treatment, and was doing great from a healthcare perspective. When my PO found out, I was incarcerated and was unable to go to treatment due to a long wait list. That meant I gave birth while incarcerated and was separated from my first child for seven months. A judge ordered I only be incarcerated until a bed opened since I was there unnecessarily in her eyes and I still had to wait five months for a bed at a treatment facility. I was also denied being able to go to the one facility where you can have your child with you due to a six month wait list. After this experience, I dedicated my life to advocating for ending crimeless revocation and for creating more alternatives to revocation that support family reunification and allow the women to be with their child. The separation can have severe negative impacts on the mother and child, and keeping the child with the mother can be the motivation they need to change their lives with proper support and resources. Epic was an amazing asset to my advocacy efforts, increased my confidence in sharing my story. They helped me identify the process on bill writing and political advocacy efforts. Since joining, I have created connections in my own community. I began writing grants and getting involved with researching this topic for more updated information on this subject. My goal is to continue my advocacy efforts that will benefit pregnant women who are incarcerated by providing doula support to women who are in prison, passing bills to make doulas Medicaid billable for vulnerable populations in need of this resource, and ending shackling mothers while pregnant. I will continue to work with the Mandalay Foundation and FREE with the goal to expand the treatment options for pregnant women in Wisconsin. These mothers and children deserve the chance to be together in ending crimeless revocation and creating more programming for this population is desperately needed. I want to thank LOM for their support, knowledge, and guidance, and I am so extremely grateful. I look forward to continued efforts that are going to make change in my state. Thank you. Hola, mi nombre es Judy Negron, fundadora de la organización Freedom Glow, una plataforma digital diseñada para darle voz a los que no la tienen. Cuando se trata de personas que han sido directamente o indirectamente impactadas por el sistema de justicia. Combinado con los esfuerzos de otras organizaciones, llevamos nuestras historias a las comunidades locales, organizaciones públicas y hasta la legislatura a niveles estatales y federales. Con el fin de dejarles entender que los efectos negativos de este sistema siguen en nuestras vidas aún mucho después de que haya cumplido la sentencia, muchas veces impidiendo poder reconstruir o ejercer vidas dignas y sostenibles después del encarcelamiento. Pero tuve la bendición de poder haber participado en el programa de las embajadoras EPIC, EPIC Ambassador, 
uno de los muchos programas ofrecidos por los Ministerios Damas de la Esperanza, de LOM, dedicados a las mujeres y niñas impactadas por el sistema de justicia. Este programa, dirigido por mujeres líderes en el área de abogacía, no solo me dio las herramientas necesarias, sino también me enseñó las técnicas efectivas en el área de abogacía para dirigir mi voz con fin de obtener cambios impactantes en nuestra política. Pero lo más importante de todo, me dio la autoconfianza para contar mi historia y el valor para hacerlo en público. En Proverbio 31.8, la Biblia nos enseña que hemos de hablar de favor de los que no pueden por sí mismos. Eso debemos hacer. Y tengo una responsabilidad moral de ayudar a aquellas personas que han sido impactadas por este sistema, en particular a los niños de los padres encarcelados, ya que estos son las víctimas silenciosas de estas graves circunstancias. Y mientras tenga voz y una plataforma, seguiré dirigiéndome para traer el cambio necesario y ver la equidad a aquellos impactos. En fin, estoy inmensamente agradecida con este programa y su gran equipo de líderes, en particular con la fundadora Topica Sean, por haber tenido esta visión tan épica en haber traído tanta oportunidad a nuestras vidas. Gracias. Uh, good afternoon. My name is Denise Kosam. I'm the founder of a nonprofit organization, Young Gen Society. Um, it's not that I have been incarcerated. I did go through uh, the jail system, but I didn't. I never. I didn't do any time. I must say, but I have been impacted by someone in my family who did time. Um, being a part of the Ladies of Hope Ministry has allowed me to know that there's other ways to go about bringing about change and how to bring the community together as far as community organizing, um, informing the community that there's different, there's ways to go about making change like uh, power mapping, um, community organizing, um, and moving forward. What I'm really looking to do is to have young adults involved, explain to them that there's another way um, besides being incarcerated. You don't have to be incarcerated, first of all. And there's other options and other avenues where you can move forward and use your passion to be powerful and to be able to help others um, so that You don't, there, you don't have to be incarcerated, period. There's other options that we have that we're going to use that I'm going to teach with what I've been taught from being an Epic ambassador, um, things that I didn't know, like um, how to get involved with the community, with the uh, legislation, who were the, um, the council person, who's the senator, And these are things that I did, which I found to be really informative in moving forward with um, what I've been taught from the Lady of Hope Ministries as an EPIC ambassador. Good afternoon and greeting to all. My name is Mrs. Rene Holder. I am from Trinidad and Tobago. Before I dwell, allow me to express my gratitude to the founder of this august body, the Ladies of Hope Ministry, Mrs. Topika Sam, for her vision, resilience, and for accepting me to be part of SAME, and everyone else whose contribution made this occasion possible. Thank you all. I am the CEO of the group Second Chances. The idea was conceived as a result of my personal experience and resolve. However, we lacked several things, viz manpower, financial and technical resources. So we stalled in the state of coagulation. The recently concluded EPIC program, which I strongly believe was God inspired, was very timely in that through this program, 
we now have the tools which, which our endeavor necessitate. Consequently, I can now commence the process towards achieving our goals. One, identifying and securing the human resource. Two, formulating short to long-term goals. Three, found funding initiatives. Four, and advocacy efforts. The latter being the most enlightening of all the information the EPIC course provided. I wish to add that my husband always states that we are not third world, but fourth world. This is the way of alluding to the fact that we are so very backward in thinking and institutional development. I am cognizant of the enormity of our endeavor, but we are resilient in our spirit that Mount Everest shall be conquered. I would like by stating emphatically that I'm very emotional about commencing the journey and advocating it's long overdue and very much needed. Thank you all again. Congratulations on your completion of the EPIC Ambassadors Program. I am Carlton Miller. I am a director of criminal justice at Arnold Ventures, and we help to support this program because we believe and our core mission is about maximizing opportunities and minimizing injustice. And we help to drive policy change through education and advocacy efforts. Since I heard about Topeka Sam years ago uh, on my journey uh, in criminal justice, I've always been a fan of her work and of her leadership. And this program is just a natural extension of who Topeka is and the passion that she has for women and young girls who are impacted by our criminal justice system. And the EPIC Ambassadors Program, we believe, embeds critical voices of women and young girls who are impacted by the justice system and embeds their leadership into grassroots movements and political and policy campaigns around the country to drive opportunities and to enlarge the lives of other people. And we believe that funding programs like this is critical to the success of our efforts around national criminal justice reform. And with that being said, I salute you all. Congratulations on your journeys. And we look forward to seeing the policy reforms that you use to help drive change and enlarge the lives of other young women and girls across this country. So again, congratulations. And I look so forward to continuing to work with Topeka and the EPIC Ambassadors Program. Mm -hmm.